Hey everybody, welcome to an MCP tutorial. Today we are going to be going over how to install MCP 1.12. Uh, so first thing you want to do is you want to go to the modcoderpack.com website and click the latest or whatever version you really want to do this for. I'm not going to be doing this because it would take me like 45 minutes, um, but the file size is relatively small. So after you've downloaded the zip file, you want to extract the contents to a folder outside of the archive which I use WinRAR for, you can use whatever your preferred method is. So after you've extracted the contents of the archive, you'll have the contents of MCP. The only thing you have to do in this folder is just run decompile.batch. Just double click that batch file and it's going to do absolutely everything for you. It's going to extract Minecraft sources, it's going to get you the libraries for the version that you want, and you just got to let this run. This can take upwards anywhere between a few minutes to maybe even 30 depending on your computer. Alright, welcome back. Hopefully the decompilation has gone successfully for you. If it hasn't, post your errors and questions in the comments and I will try my best to get back and help you out individually. You can press any key to continue and it'll close the menu. So now you have the decompiled source code of the Minecraft version, which is obviously the desired, well, what we need from this mainly. But um, to make things more convenient and to have a clean IntelliJ project using Gradle, uh, we are going to take a few more steps to ensure that. So what you want to do is you want to make a new folder, call it IntelliJ or whatever. I just call it IntelliJ because it matches the same thing as an Eclipse folder in here. But So next we want to get this path right here and we're going to open IntelliJ and we are going to make a new project at this path right here. Once IntelliJ opens, just create a new project. You want to click Gradle, Java, and make sure you're using Java version 1.8. Click Next. You can make this whatever you want, but the usual convention is going to be com dot your domain or me dot and then your name. I'm just going to go with me dot chris umb and the artifact ID is the actual project name. For me, I'm going to make this MCP dash tutorial, um, and I just changed the version at one point. You don't have to do that. And then uh, click next, click next, and then um, that's where we're going to get this from. We're going to copy this, Control A, and Control V in the project location, and then click finish. So next, you're going to move the sources that we have decompiled into our actual source folder by going in our left window to source and Minecraft and our right window to IntelliJ source main Java. We're going to take these con these three files here, MCP, net, and start.java, and we're just going to move them to our other window here. If we go back to our IntelliJ window and we open this up, we should see these are all going to be here, but we are going to have a lot of upset files. Not that one but other files are going to be upset because they're not going to have the dependencies that they need. So we're going to fix that next. So if we open back, open up our folders again, we go back to the IntelliJ folder. We're going to create, or no, actually we're not going to create a new folder. We're just going to go to jars and we're going to take this libraries folder and we're going to also move this to our IntelliJ directory. And then we're going to go to versions 1.12 and then also move 1.12-natives inside of the libraries folder. The differences between the 1.12 natives is that these are DLL files and the rest of these are going to be Java files. So next you're going to make a new folder called run, which is where we're going to have the Minecraft client actually run inside of where it's going to have a few things specific to that in it, namely going to be this assets folder right here. We're going to move this inside of here for now. Um, this is going to solve issues that a lot of people have with sounds and whatnot because it's going to have the indexes file here that'll, that'll tell the client where everything's at. So next we're going to get the Minecraft assets for this version by locating our MCPs folder and we're going to go back into here and we're going to go to temp, source, Minecraft and there's this assets file. There's a log4j2 and a pack file. We need all three of these and we're just going to move them into our resources folder inside of IntelliJ. So now that you've done that, that's going to be the end of the Windows Explorer stuff. We're going to go back into IntelliJ and we're going to actually link the dependencies with Gradle. We're going to say implementation, file tree, libraries which is kind of the same thing as um, if you've used Gradle before, like just implement like implementation and then like a URL or whatever. But um, this is for flat files that are like on your system instead. So yeah, after you've done that, um, you'll notice that these are far less upset. In fact, there should be no errors to any of these files in the source folder at all anywhere. So that that's good. Uh, the last thing we need to do, so you can actually run the client, is we're going to add a configuration, click this little plus button in the top left, click application. You can name it whatever you want, I like to name it start. So we're going to use the class path of module main, whatever one ends in main is the right one. 
Uh, the working directory, like I said before, we're going to change this to backslash run, which is where the client's actually going to like store, you know, world saves, resource packs, and stuff like that too. Uh, we're going to set the main class to the start class, which is going to be um, in the default package, so you don't need period, whatever. Um, also, this is going to be red, it's going to say it's bad, uh, ignore it. So, yeah. Um, another thing we need to do is in the virtual machine options, we need to do dash d java.library.path equal dot dot slash libraries slash 1.12 dash native. Pretty much what this is saying is we're going to go from the run folder, we're going to go back one to go into the IntelliJ folder, and then go inside of libraries and then 1.12 dash natives. If you have an issue when you try to run your client and it says something about LWJGL, this is why. Your natives aren't linked correctly, make sure you type this properly make sure it's actually there and whatnot uh, after that you just click apply and then you click OK and the very last thing we have to do before we can do anything with our client is change the asset index to 1.12 um, that's that's it at this point you should be able to click this little green button at the top right to start your client and it should run Minecraft with all of the assets and the sounds and it should be good so after after waiting a little while, you'll see the client should open up and there should be no errors or no warnings or anything about sounds. And if you have those, you didn't put the assets folder in here properly or it doesn't contain a 1.12.json, which in that case, um, try locating the assets folder in your actual .minecraft folder for your actual game. But here we are, this is a client, everything should be working just fine. I'm going to turn this down because it's loud. Anyway. So that's for the creating of the project. Now we're going to talk about exporting the project, which is a little bit of a hassle, and it shouldn't be, but it is. So after you've made all of your changes, you've you know modified some code. Let's say I'm going to do something very easy to tell. I'm going to go to the client GUI. I'm going to go to inventory, and then GUI container creative. I'm going to find the clone section of this code. And then in here, I'm going to do inventory player dot player dot add chat message new sh text component string hello world, which should make it so every time we clone an inv or clone an item in the creative inventory, it'll say this in chat. So now that I've made this change, all you have to do to export this project is go to the top right and click Gradle, and then uh, go to this drop down, click Tasks, Build, and Build. Run the build task as if it's any other Gradle project, pretty much. There. So once it's done building, you can scroll up and go to build libs, and this is going to be your compiled, modified client. Uh, so after you, after you've built it, you can right click and show an explorer. Um, so real quick, I'm going to go over something very simple that has to do with the Minecraft launcher. Every version inside the Minecraft launcher, like you know 1.12, or if you've downloaded Optifine or something like that, they all have what's called an ID. Um, this ID is what the name of the folder has to be, the name of the jar file has to be, and the name of the JSON file we are about to create. Otherwise, you're going to run into issues, and it's going to be a shit show of problems. So, just putting that out there now so you understand that there's going to be an ID involved. So go ahead and minimize your IntelliJ project and open up your MCP folder again. The last time we're going to have to do this, we're going to go back in, we're going to go to jars versions 1.12. Now there's this 1.12.json file. We're going to go ahead and actually open IntelliJ again really quick because it makes it a lot easier to edit this. Go ahead and drag this into your IntelliJ and hit Control alt l to format it so you can actually see what the hell you're doing. So real quick, you're going to notice that there's an ID inside of Asset Index. Don't change this one. You're going to find the ID that is on the top level of this JSON after downloads. There's this ID. Change it to what I previously explained, the ID of your client. I'm going to use mcp-tutorial. So you're going to want to get rid of this download section entirely as well. Uh, if you notice that your client is getting replaced with the default 1.12 client, that's because that's what this entire section is devoted to doing. It's to check if your client is like if the client jar has been malformed or some something has happened to it, it needs to replace it. So it does. So just go ahead and remove that block. Uh, after that, you have a functional JSON file again, remember that you need to make sure that it's the same ID for like the folder and the name of this and everything like that. So yeah, you go ahead and rename it to your ID. As you can see, my jar file isn't the right thing either, so I gotta make sure it's you know consistent, otherwise it'll freak out. And then the folder also needs to be the same as the ID that you just made. So go ahead and take both of those things, put them inside the folder that you just created. Now, this should be fully functioning client. You can go to percent app data percent slash dot minecraft slash versions, 
and just drag and drop this in. Make sure both those things are there and the same. MCP. Oh, I didn't spell it correctly, so that would have been bad. MCP tutorial. Let me make sure I made the ID properly. Cool. Go ahead and open your Minecraft launcher. After you've opened the launcher, at the top right, you click these three lines. Click launch options and click add new. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it tutorial. This does not need to follow the same ID pattern. I promise it can be whatever you want it to be. In the drop down list of versions, you should see release MCP tutorial. Select that and click save. If it says something like unavailable or uh, when you highlight it, it says download next to it, something's gone wrong, most likely download might work. So just click play. If it says unavailable, you'll probably have an error. And you did something wrong, you rewatch the video. So at this point, I'm going to load one of these worlds. And to exemplify this is the actual client, if I clone one of these items, it'll say hello world, as we instructed it to do. So this is the compiled client that we just made using uh, Gradle and IntelliJ and no weird MCP provided methods or tools. So uh, yeah, hopefully you found this helpful and hopefully this helps some people out. Uh, thank you for watching.